Welcome back to The Person Everyone Needs. My name is Webb Hoggard, and we are continuing to talk about how to make ourselves better. The person everyone needs is someone who is consistently bettering themselves. And so uh, I'm trying to help us think through how we could get better. The first week we talked about the plan of success, which comes straight from Luke chapter 2, verse 52 where it says that Jesus increased in stature physically, intellectually, spiritually, and relationally. These are the four areas that we need to make sure we're putting plans together so that we can constantly get better. And then the last two weeks, we talked about lists. We went to the scripture, the great commandment, love the Lord your God, as I said with my sons, with all of your heart, hands, and head. And uh, I brought up some lists, one from Galatians 5, which is the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12. And then we talked about the seven spirits of God. I got those out of Isaiah 11. That deals with the heart, the hands, and the head. And then we talked about the list of the ministry, uh, Ephesians 4, the fivefold ministry. In Romans 12, there's leadership skills there called the motivational gifts. Anyway, I was telling you all of these gifts to, to tell you some ways that maybe you need to focus on adding these things in your life. Lord, help me to get better in these things. Because here's what it is. If you'll strengthen your skill, and we've talked about this in the past, the scripture says, be strong and courageous. Strong is talking about skill. It's talking about muscle. It's talking about ability. Courage, courageous is talking about your heart, having the tenacity to make it to the end. So what I can tell you is as your skill increases, so does your courage. Now, I know some people that have more courage right? More audacity than they do skill or ability. And sometimes they still win. But how great it is when you can say, I'm standing strong and I'm courageous. The world does not need you to hide. It does not need you to be alone. It does not need you to shrink yourself. It does not need you to pull yourself away. It needs you to be the strongest you possibly can be and completely on display. And so today I come here to tell you, stop hiding. You have what it takes to make a difference, and you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are scared just like you, but I'm telling you today, stop hiding. You've got what it takes. Remember what the armor bearer said to Jonathan. Jonathan said, let's go over and teach those Philistines something. And the man looked over at Jonathan, and he says, look, I'm with you, heart and soul. Today, what I want to talk to you about is the people in your life that you need to be the person everyone needs, the people that you need in your life in order to be a success. I have been blessed in my life to have dozens of people who've said, Webb, I'm with you, heart and soul. I'm humbled today to tell you that I'm abundantly, overly, more than I deserve blessed to have been encouraged by the many people in my life. Now, I'm going to talk to you about people who are alive and well and those who have been a part of my life. I heard Dick Foth one time say, he's a, he's a writer, he said, people are books and skin. And what he was talking about is you can learn a lot from books. And I've also, I'm grateful that there have been many people that have written down their memoirs, written down their principles of life. I've been encouraged and built up and, and sharpened by many books. But I've had people, books and skin, that have read my life, spoken life into me, spoken words of encouragement, met me when I didn't deserve to be met, and have poured into me and have been a part of my life. I have been abundantly blessed. And I'm going to talk to you about three different groups that are important at every part of your life, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are. There, All three of these groups can be offered to you, and all three of these groups can be active in your life. So people... All people need a leader. No matter where you're at in your life, you may say to me, Webb, I'm days away from dying, and there's somebody in your life that can speak into your life to tell you something you don't know already. Someone can encourage you. Someone can help you. Someone can move you in the right direction. We all need leaders. I have been blessed by some of the greatest leaders in our world to, to be able to sit at tables with them and to hear their story to receive their principles and encouragement. Uh, in moments when I've been falling apart, I've been able to call their phones and be encouraged by them in a moment's notice. I have some great leaders in my life. Early on in my life, my papa, who was a pastor, he was my best friend growing up until I was six years old when he passed. And I look to him even today 
as a man of great leadership who's taught me what it was to be a man of holiness. And then I began to go to church, and I met my first pastor, Pastor Denton. And I remember when I was in the hospital having a procedure on my ears, he showed up one morning with a, a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit right when I was done uh, with my surgery. And I will never forget the care that he gave me, the love that he gave me in that moment. And I got to serve his son. I was his his son's associate pastor, and then I succeeded his son as the pastor of the same church when I was 34 years old. I have been blessed by the leadership of the Dentons. Roy Otis Denton and Buddy Denton have been, are giants in my life, and I'm so very grateful for them. Wallace Phillips is another. He's a Barnabas in my life. He's encouraged me, spoken words over me early on in my life before Anyone else thought I had anything to offer, Wallace was noticing the gifts in me, and he encouraged me. I've been blessed to sit at tables with Dr. Mark Rutland and hear the leadership principles he's learned as he's been president over colleges and led churches and that kind of thing. I have a weekly standing meeting with a coach of mine. Uh, his name is Bruce Ritter. And he has sharpened me. He's helped me make decisions personally. He's helped me understand how to become a better husband and father. He has helped me become a better pastor and leader in the church. He's about 15 years older than me, and so he's seen some things that I haven't seen yet. And I am so very grateful for his investment in my life. And I know maybe what you're saying to yourself right now is, my Lord, if you've had that much investment, you ought to be further along than you are. You've, you need to be a better speaker. You ought to have more to offer. And the truth is you may not have any idea how bad off I would have been had they not taken the time to invest in me. My people who loved me enough to treat me like a person when I was just a child, people who treated me like I mattered when I wasn't on the inside and my family or no one else could offer them anything, I have been blessed over and over again to have people who lead me. But there's a second group that I also have been blessed with, and I'm so very grateful for. The second group are people who lean. I lean on when I need help. I've been blessed with a wife that she is someone I lean on when I need help the most. Now, I try to lead her as much as I possibly can, and I let her lean on me, but there are moments when I have to lean on her. She is a blessing to my life. I have friends that are helping me with this podcast right now. Craig is a friend that I have leaned on. I have, I have in moments, been vulnerable with. I have spoken to him. Friends like Kanisha that I've leaned on. Friends from college, Matt and Mason and Dom and Alex, these guys that I used to lean on and I have leaned on in moments of difficulty. I can call them right now and they're, they're with me in the midst of the difficulty. I have other pastor friends that they understand what I'm going through because they are going through it too. When I was growing up, I, I was in a band when I was in high school and at the beginning of college. And those guys are still friends that if I need somebody, I can call them in a moment's notice. And uh, there's a deep connection that we have. I've been on worship teams in the past that we've had chemistry together because those teammates, there are people in your life that you can lean on. Now, listen to me very, very careful. Be careful with the people that you lean on because sometimes you're going to tell them information and it's got to be trustworthy. So don't lean on just anybody and don't let just anybody lead you. You need to choose these people very carefully, but in every season of your life, you have someone who will lead, you have someone to lean on, and then the last group that every single one of us, and no matter how young you are, trust me, there's someone who can learn from you. There are people who need to learn. And I say there are leaders, there are leaners, and then there are learners in our life. And uh, I've been blessed with mentors who are the leaders. I've been blessed with leaners. And I've been blessed with having several people throughout my days that I've been able to encourage, to disciple, to, to strengthen, to tell them the little bit that I know, as Andy Stanley would say, I've never filled up anybody else's cup, but I do try to empty mine as often as possible. I am blessed and thankful that the Lord has given me a position to disciple many others. And you know what? When I'm learning, when others are learning from me, I'm also learning from them. When I first got out of college and wanted to be a preacher, I came back home and I immediately became a teacher. I was teaching high school history for seven years when I wanted to be a pastor. And in that time, it was at a Christian school, so that we had chapel. And so I basically asked, could I take over chapel? And for that seven years, I sharpened my gift of preaching with high schoolers. Now, you may not understand this, but there's no one less impressed 
in all the world than high schoolers. So for seven years, I sharpened my speaking gift in front of a bunch of people who would, they shall not be, they shall not be moved. And the attitude, because of the atmosphere that I received in that moment, it actually helped me with my communication skills because I had to bring my A game. I had to take it up every single week. I couldn't act like it was just a bunch of kids. Who, why does it matter? I had to every week come with something worth saying and try to say it as creatively as possible. The gifting that I have today, though it may feel dull to anyone else, it is sharpened because I was willing to take the time to learn my learners. And so in my life, I've been blessed to have leaders who taught me what they've learned. I've had leaners who have been there with me in my most difficult times, and I've had people who have learned. They have sharpened me because I've had to rise to the occasion of trying to teach them something if you have these three groups in your life, you are a rich person, a person that is ready for success. And this is the person everyone needs, someone who knows how to be under authority, someone who knows how to lean on the appropriate people, not everyone, and those who know how to teach, how to help others learn what they have learned. And if you ever need a picture for this, I'm just going to tell you, Paul, he had Barnabas who led him. Paul had a leader. Barnabas did not follow Paul. Paul followed Barnabas. We also know that when he split from Barnabas, there was a night that he was put in prison and he was singing in the prison with his friend Silas. Silas was a leaner. He was the one that was with them in his darkest night when they thought they might die the next day. They were singing together in the prison. There are people who will be beside you in those moments. And then there are learners, people who come under. And the cool thing about learners is when they eclipse you. I didn't mention this a while ago, but a man, a boy by the name Marky is somebody that when he was really young, I first came and was a teacher and I began to teach him about how to play music, and he has by far eclipsed me in musical ability, and I'm so proud of who he is because he's been able to go further than me. And that's, in Paul's life, the person of Timothy. He found Timothy, he helped him get saved, he helped disciple him, he helped encourage him, and then he helped build him up before he died. And Timothy was the legacy of his life as he moved on. And so if you have a leader in your life, you're favored. If you have a leaner in your life, they can give you courage when you need it the most. And if you have a learner in your life, well, that means you have a legacy, something that you're going to leave if you were to leave this earth. My encouragement to you is to find these three people in your life and uh, recognize how abundantly blessed you are. If you have three good friends in your life, you're blessed. And if you're blessed, well, you're a person that everyone needs. 